Greetings, and welcome to the very first episode in my Mush Brain at the Wheel series. Starting with the starter characters from Genshin Impact, and the very first person to join your team. Not to mention the most neglected character by probably 90% of the community. <laughs> I am of course talking about Amber. Disclaimer. I will expect anyone watching to have some idea of the game or mechanics that I will be discussing. I will explain things on a surface level if need be, but don't expect anything in depth. This is also not a video on best build or how to squeeze as much damage as possible out of said character. It is simply a video series on personal tastes, and I feel we need more of these here for anyone and everyone who simply enjoys their own playstyle. Now, I do ask that you bear with me. I may have a script, but I am not used to doing these videos, so it is going to be a bit of a mess. Without further ado, let's begin. Amber, a pyro bow character in Genshin Impact, with some interesting abilities. The jokes around her being useless are not actually without merit. Or more specifically, they are understandable problems. When I decided to build Amber, I wanted to make a character that wasn't just a pop-in, pop-out support, but instead someone who could actually fight even if she wouldn't be able to do it alone. First in my process was to identify her weaknesses. And let me tell you, she definitely has some. I won't go into too much detail about her kit, as others have already explained it in far better detail and quality, but I will summarize some of it here. Her elemental burst is quite small, and larger enemies can generally just walk out of it. And even smaller enemies, if they're not stunned enough by it, will just get up and leave. I mean, who else is just gonna stand and fire? Moving on to her elemental skill, this only gives her energy towards her elemental burst if it deals damage upon detonation. And without a constellation, specifically I believe it's level 2 constellation for her, I totally could look this up but I'm not going to apparently. You can, uh, Without that you can't detonate Baron Bunny at will. You have to wait for the timer, which means if there is no enemy standing next to it when it goes off, you simply don't get any particles towards your elemental burst, and it's quite sad. Not to mention the fact that her elemental skill is not a huge radius and feels a little inconsistent at times, as I have laid it right next to a rune guard that was downed and it didn't deal any damage when it exploded, which made me very sad. And finally, her skill and burst are rather split between high elemental mastery and low elemental mastery. Or one is one benefits more from it than the other, I should say. For those who don't know, elemental mastery simply affects the amount of damage elemental reactions do. Higher elemental mastery, higher damage. It's pretty simple. The problem is, elemental reactions kind of have a cooldown at times. Like they'll happen and they if you keep hitting they won't happen for a moment unless you are constantly like applying the two elements, it seems. This is just mush brain watching and experimenting. So unfortunately her elemental skill benefits greatly from a decent amount of elemental mastery, as it's a single explosion of pyro and does quite a bit of damage. So with elemental mastery, it does quite a bit more. Unfortunately, her elemental burst does not seem to gain as much of a benefit from elemental mastery. Unless you are fighting an enemy that specifically has an element consistently on them, such as cryo slimes and similar enemies. Now on to the build. Starting with her elemental skill and burst, I thankfully have the constellation for her skill, so I can detonate Baron Bunny by shooting it with the bow. And I have the bow from the battle pass, which allows me to group smaller enemies together when its ability activates. This helps mitigate both problems of Baron Bunny's detonation radius and her elemental burst enemy simply walking out of it by trapping them where they are essentially. 
I know I have a visual here showing you, but I'm not I don't have that visual up while I'm recording, so I'm just I'm going, I'm rambling. Now, with the problem of her elemental burst and elemental skill dealt with, the next question was, what damage did I want to focus on? And so I was like, well, why not both? And then some. <laughs> Giving Amber two piece from the Bloodstained Chivalry for physical damage, and a Pyro artifact to boost her Pyro damage, and two of the Noblesse Oblige pieces for increased elemental burst damage. Amber has gained a level of all around decent damage for me. Now, with Amber as is, she is doing pretty nicely. However, she isn't alone. This is a team game after all, so I decided to see who that I had worked well with this build of Amber I've made. Animal characters, of course, were the first to come to mind, and they both have done pretty nicely in my tests. One of the best teammates I've actually been able to put with this version of my Amber was Lisa. I'll talk more about her build in my next video, but to put it simply, Amber is able to pull the enemies together, release an elemental burst, and as both the fire rains down and I switch over to Lisa, I'm able to do repeated overload damage with this maneuver. And since overload likes to knock enemies back and throw them outside of a range, thanks to the fact that the bow keeps them grouped together means they simply cannot escape. Amber is an often overlooked character and for understandable reasons, but since I love a challenge, building Amber was a fun one. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I encourage you to comment your Amber builds in the, well, presumably in the comment section below, whether they are super serious builds, joke builds, or I just thought this might be neat builds, please feel free to share, and be respectful of other people's builds. We all know that there is a meta for every single character, how to get all that awesome damage, and it is indeed awesome <laughs> to see, but let's take a moment and explore the different ways we all enjoy playing these characters. If you have any suggestions for future characters you want me to show, or ideas on how you think these videos can be improved, you are welcome to comment these as well. All y'all take care, and good luck.